Good afternoon, AI and API fans. We're here in Denver, Colorado. It's the end of day three of Boomi World 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. Joined here with John Furrier. We've had a thrilling day of interviews yeah, yeah. so far. We've got some outstanding guests actually this afternoon. Anne, it's so wonderful to have you back. And Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to meet you guys. It's great to meet you. It's it's a celebrity day for you. You are back to back, lots of people chatting. Yeah. Jamie, you've got a big smile on your face. There are a lot of questions I still can't answer, but there are lots. <laughs> <laughs> you you mentioned when we first sat down just a few moments ago that you've been waiting for today and it's only just the starting line. I have. Somebody today said to me, oh, we're finally there, finally at the at the finish line. I said, no, just the starting line. We've got lots of plans. So what does today mean for you then, considering you've been working on this for a while? It is really the culmination of a lot of work that I've, we as a team have been doing over the last uh, year and really excited to have delivered the things we've delivered organically over the last year and been able to go out there and make some acquisitions to kind of strategically build the portfolio. It's wonderful. The big acquisition discussion, organic and inorganic growth. Yep. You guys are in pole position. I've been tweeting about it. We talked about it earlier and, and about how Boomi is just really in a great position of what you guys were doing. All the grinding and the work that they did on integration that involved data and workflows, the hottest areas. Yep. Now you add in APIs which run everything. So. The API management's a tough space, it's competitive, but you guys are kind of taking a different approach. Can you explain the strategy on how you guys came about one, the acquisition targets, and how that's going to contribute to Boomi going forward? So I can maybe talk about the history and then you Go definitely the future. So we we have done API management for a number of years, and I think a lot of the things that we've added to our platform were really because customers were asking for it. So a lot of our customers needed APIs and API management, and they didn't want to buy this big, heavy solution in order to deliver it. So they started um, driving our development of that solution for a number of times, but we didn't, maybe it's fair to say we didn't go at it in a massive way like we did. We didn't put the massive down payment <laughs> earlier. Um, <laughs> we did that recently, yeah. and because we were working on so many things, and so. Now we're starting to see that the approach we took with API management, the very pragmatic approach of, you know, don't overladen it with a bunch of administrative layers, do what you need to do to kind of get the job done. And that has been an amazing approach for us, that composable approach. Um, you know, don't force anyone to take API management. Yeah. If you need it, snap it on. But now we've matured as a business and we've got so many customers now. We've got a huge number of customers and they're using that solution wildly. So now we're at that position where we're ready to make that next step. So I'll let Jamie talk about what that step is. Yeah, I think the leadership team recognized that it was a growth area for us and for the industry. Yeah. And it is a competitive space, but we knew that we needed to be able yeah. to, to grow and scale with our customers, uh, especially as AI and other things have driven yeah. Uh, the adoption of APIs uh, really is sky high. Uh, and so by investing in both uh, kind of the, the enterprise scale around API management, being able to process billions of transactions a day uh, for our customers and providing the security that, that they need and the governance that they need, but also recognizing that we're not the only player in town and taking a federated approach and uh, really expanding the horizons of uh, the API program. So yeah, you know, we always say, skate through where the puck's going to be. You guys are had made investments, not just in the M&A we, we, that was announced today. You came in as part of that investment. Matt came in as part of that investment, CTO. No. So you're building in a team now, making moves on the field. That's going to have to translate into the product. So how does iPaaS integrated platforms of service, which by the way is still growing at 35% oh, yeah. a year? Okay, just call that a small market relative to the <laughs> generative AI coming. Where's that puck going to be? Because you, 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 I'll say there's a reason why you do it. I can see the dots almost connecting. Can you connect them for us? How does iPaaS actually convert into the Gen AI application space? Because we know the demand's high. Developers are going crazy in open source, the code away, the models are booming. People see interaction between models as now a, a thing through APIs, obviously yeah. standard now. So take us through the power dynamics of how iPaaS just evolves from a market that's big to the huge Gen AI everyone's going after. I can, I can oh, yeah. take the first part of that. So 
if we look at what iPaaS has been doing, it's been able to connect systems and applications and data at every endpoint, and that's been absolutely critical. And we're critical data pipelines for many organizations, very large organizations, and also small organizations. That's been a fundamental piece for any sort of technology revolution or you know uh, di digital transformation. So we've been there, right? And we've been living it with our customers, and we're seeing what they're trying to do. And API management with one of them. I mentioned that organically that sort of just grew. So did event streams, right? So the need to manage real-time events, um, a lot of the functionality built in our platform, the need to workflow, that, that came from our customers' desire to do these things. So these critical systems are still sitting on top, but now we're, we've got this force factor coming from AI coming in, and all those applications out there that we're connecting that data needs to be blended together. The lowest common denominator there is an API, right? No matter, you peel everything back, you're going to still have APIs. And that is something that will be fundamental and grow um, astronomically over time. So there needs to be a practical way of managing it. And I think Matt stood up on stage today and said, what did he say, do you remember? about um, We need a better way of managing APIs. The old way doesn't work anymore. We have a new environment and new challenges. And one of the things I really love about generative AI is it hasn't just completely shook everybody. Like my Uber driver talking about AI and the drive-in, like didn't prompt it at all. I was like, wow, this is fascinating. But it, yeah. it means Mainstream. That it's, there's a reframing happening. If yeah. we think about technology revolutions, reframing of the problem and the question is super fascinating. So this is another thing yeah. that we're looking at, so reframing the API management problem. What is the smarter way to yeah. do today? How, how, how do you do that? I mean, we were, we were talking about how, you know, APIs back in the day were maybe going to be relevant. Now it's 80, it's basically the entire internet, 80, 85% of the internet of yeah. traffic is, is calling APIs. And, and it's only going to increase by orders of magnitude, billions and billions of calls moving forward. How does Boomi prepare for that? I mean, you have to be ready for the enterprise scale. So uh, we brought the kind of simplicity to the complexity of of iPaaS, of the application landscape with iPaaS. Uh, Boomi was the originator there. Uh, Mashery was the originator of the term API management uh, and the category as a whole. Really? I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's cool. 2006. Wow, yeah. rad. Yeah. So we, Bonus we, points for that kind of parallel history. So we're going to be calling it a data reservoir moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 dude, I love this. All right, trendsetters for the lexicon of our industry. It's right. fantastic. And so I think what differentiates a true iPaaS that's SaaS-based, uh, control plane in the cloud, very easy to, to drag and drop. Uh, our customers expect that simplicity, and to be able to bring that to API management as well, to get them started in the cloud, uh, to not have any really operational overhead, not have to deploy infrastructure, be able to scale into the, into the billions, and, and have the security that they're expecting. That's the, the power we bring to the enterprise as the, as as the problem scales with AI. Here, Joe, Jamie, oh, Jamie, I'll start going. No, I was, I was... So Dave and I and Sven always talk about the cube. The old days of IT, back, back in the old days, was in the enterprise, you solve complexity by adding more complexity. Right. So that was kind of the game back in the old days. Lock in, okay. Not, not in the world we live in now like with APIs and, and the open growth, open source and whatnot, you can't do that, but you can build abstraction layers. You mentioned that in our last chat. Yeah. Abstraction layers are a good thing. You can actually abstract away complexities, and that's just evolution. So the question I want to ask you guys is APIs are becoming um, more proliferated. Just, you call them sprawl, but I just call them growth. But like mm -hmm. it's online population of APIs is right. more connective tissue. Yep. Security challenge, certainly, but that's the plumbing now. Right. So that's a feature, not a bug. You'd probably agree. <laughs> What's the optimization of, 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 of solving the problems that come out of the sprawl. Because you can't stop the sprawl. Right. Well, right. I'm going to address one point that you made before, because I thought it was really interesting. Um, legacy IT. So if we thought about before, what were the challenges there when we started talking about digital transformation? Is it federation, we all knew, control at a certain level, governance and compliance control. That meant that you had to bring things to one point before they could be distributed out. But this, is. The, what I meant by reframing the problem is, is that the most efficient way of doing it? What if as your APIs enter into your environment, you do the safe, the, the checks there, the testing, you know, How do you just apply your security settings there so that you're now populating a register 
that will mean that those are trusted because you've already done yeah. some due diligence. Rather than bring it into a system that casts a queue, and then you become a bottleneck again. And that was one of the old challenges of IT yeah. is they, yeah. to get that, that governance, you needed to create a bottleneck. And you know, to solve that problem, to yeah. make that less complex, there's just better. That's slowed everything there. down, by the way, too. So and can, we're in yeah. a world that wants to go faster, not yeah. slower, right? So uh, IT is fragmented on purpose. Like the, there was a benefit to the fragmentation of IT. Yeah. If we were all living within the walls of the data center and we all had to build our own applications and build all the, build all the foundational layers for that and build all the connectivity ourselves, it, it wouldn't be sustainable. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to live the lives we're leading today uh, without the adoption of the cloud and of SaaS applications and mobile and the API explosion that, uh, that came from that and all of the, the, these previous technology events that have led to the fragmentation of, of IT. And so, but that's okay. You want to give your teams the ability to go work on a problem, solve that problem on the platform of their choice, use the technologies that they're ready for. I mean, even agile teams and the two pizza teams go, go work on this project. Take us through the acquisition of integrations. You guys are in the integration business. Take us through how you're going to integrate in uh, the two startups, and you have an OEM deal with Vishal's company for FinTalk, yeah. right? So, okay, that's yeah. cool. Take us through how you see this core concept. The expertise are in-house, you're there. You guys are there. I would say there's a lot we still can't talk about, so <laughs> we've signed but not closed, so there will be a lot of information coming to, uh, to our customers, to their customers, uh, but we want to make sure that they know that uh, today, everything will continue uh, as expected. We're not making anybody move. We're not, there will be no interruption to, uh, to service. Uh, but when we close, we've got a really exciting roadmap for uh, bringing these things on board, uh, making their infrastructure part of our platform, uh, making the look and feel look like Boomi, uh, and then really building yeah. on this foundation that we've, that we've acquired to do even more. What would you say the bumper sticker stuff. would be for the customers watching or prospects around the philosophy, the guiding principles around the API kind of next level vibe going on and boomy, what would be, how would you talk to that without showing a little leg, but maybe showing some sure. of the, where you're going, where you go on the roadmap? I think everything you expect from traditional API management will be able to deliver. We'll be also be able to deliver the, the governance and federation that the few uh, can at this point and that people uh, need I, uh, I took a, I did a survey with one of the, the training classes here. API governance was their number one ask. They they're mm -hmm. starving for it because these APIs are all over and they need to make sure everything is secure and managed. But I think there's no API management can't just be API management anymore. And the fact that we have a vision that includes integration and APIs and data and AI really accounts for all of the different ways that that uh, that any of our customers is going to be be pulled and have to account for. Yeah, I, oh yeah, I'm sorry, just make an, add another point to that. Steve's all, Steve Lucas, our CEO, is always talking about convergence. And I think that's what we've seen. Because we're at, when you're in the position that we are in the iPaaS space, we're able to see what our customers are doing and our partners are doing. Is it, brilliant vantage point. So we're able to see that convergence happening and respond to it before a lot of other vendors can. So we're in a pretty good advantage. But we've also had this philosophy and culture, and you mentioned how is the acquisition going to work? We have a little experience with integration. So <laughs> the technical part, really not that worried about. We also have a little bit of experience with moving from one organization to another, yeah. to becoming independent. So we've done the really hard stuff before. And we've done it beautifully well, you know. Yeah. But the one thing that is really makes a difference when you're talking about acquisitions, and all of us have been part of them, and IT, it's a modern yeah. aspect of culture. And I think the one thing that is really, Boomi really wins on is culture. We have a fantastic culture here. I don't know how many of our leaders you've met. Yeah. But a lot. I hope you can see. And the customers are very loyal too. Yeah. You have a great the loyal sense of community. Is huge. It's really powerful, actually. It's refreshing, yeah. frankly. And you can Thank feel you that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I felt it right away talking to, talking to Drew on your sales team last night, and just the deep caring I felt he felt for everyone of the customers that were here. And I mean, 
sales guys can 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 sell most people. They can't sell me. And it was really powerful. She sells I love that. Yeah. That's a hit. Yeah, Joe, sales. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it was really, it, it touched me. We do a lot of, we have a lot of these conversations and you could really sense the care and compassion. So that's actually my next question where I was going to drive this. You've both brought it up in a way that I can, I can sense the passion for those folks watching at home. You can feel the energy when you say it. This customer feedback loop is obviously imperative for you. And so I'm, I, I have two questions. I'm curious what that process even looks like in general, because it's very clearly ingrained in Boomi's existence. So this is obviously a, a thing, that this is a practice and, a, and, and something that has a flow within the organization. But I'm curious because you're in London mm -hmm. and you're here stateside. I'm wondering if the customer requests are similar, different, if there's any EMEA nuance. I don't know, I'm just curious. Well, I mean, the approach is a little bit different. <laughs> I would <can> imagine. <laughs> um, Probably more apologies on one side of the fence than the other. Uh, okay. yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, I, Canadian. I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, the English. My team, my team is British. They say sorry every third word. It's Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, well, I mean, one thing, I, I just want to address one bit about customer feedback. We have a process for customer feedback coming in. We also, for our across our application stack, we have something called an early access program so that we can give access to our key customer suppliers, whoever wants it really, they could sign up for this and they have access to the functionality early. So we could understand the challenges, the drivers, pain points, also the key things that they're looking for. Um, and we're revamping, but we have a technology advisory board and um, a customer advisory board. We listen to our customers a lot. Um, so the very nature of my role is so that I can sit there with key customers and partners and understand the challenges. So to answer your question, EMEA folks, um, they, they're, very direct, they're very actually very direct. And also they, they like, to pick things apart. Like, and I, I've been in this area for a very long time. I was one of them, and I didn't recognize it until I started working more closely with American counterparts, and I thought, oh no, I've gone native. Like, so you, you want to, <laughs> and the whole point is, you, you're passionate about that vendor, you love the vendor, but you want to break it to make them better. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I don't know if, if you I share the same insight. I really insight. appreciate that kind of radical candor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I apologize in advance to all the EMEA folks, but I love that about them because yeah. I can see yeah. myself in them too. Because it helps you understand your product and helps you move forward. And we've really listened to that feedback, but I'm there to make sure I can bridge that gap and bring it back to all of my um, my lovely counterparts in the U.S. as well. Well, the truth sets you free too. I mean, if someone's <laughs> if someone's being bluntly honest with you, then you know they actually care enough to give you that feedback. Yeah. First of all, and they want it to be better, or else they would have just pieced out and bought something else. And they're good at what they do. It's excellent feedback. So I think yeah. that's the thing. We want to be able to make sure that that loop stays there. Um, but but some of the things that they're concerned about, and especially in the world of AI, is about data. Um, data sovereignty is a thing. Also, um, policies around regulating, regulating is probably the wrong word, but policies around data in the AI world and understanding what responsible AI looks like is something that EMEA folks are maybe a little ahead of the game because they're asking the questions um, it, with some rigor, with maybe more rigor than I've seen in the US. Oh, that's that's my perspective. I love this. Jamie, what's your perspective? Yeah, this is our first Boomy World in a while, but yeah. last year we did Boomy, Boomy World Tour. So oh, right. was, uh, six or eight cities, global tour, uh, and was at several of the MIA ones. Yeah. I went to Sydney, and so I uh, got that perspective from, from down under. APJ is actually really advanced and mature in terms of API management and their requirements. Mm -hmm. So to talk to those people in person, I did two listening sessions where just a room full of people and I, I briefly told them kind of what we had planned and then it was all feedback and, and uh, interactions and asking them questions about their use cases and uh, what they're trying to manage beyond APIs, what's, yeah. what's next, is it events, is it different patterns, different styles. Yeah. Uh, and so to be able to talk to you know, those customers in different regions and uh, meet them at their level of maturity uh, is really helpful. Yeah, awesome. You guys did a great job. Congratulations on the API acquisitions and the team. You know, I got to say, you know, you see companies that have fast, closed loop time, feedback cycles, and love APIs. Yeah. Can work back, see everything with customers. Sounds a lot like Amazon Web Services success, very API, data centers and API, but they see a lot of workloads. Mm -hmm. And you can innovate faster on working backwards from the customers, as they say. Sounds like that is what you guys have in play here. So looking forward to, to hearing more use cases. Yeah, I know. the thing I'm most excited about coming out of this is to work with not just the team that we brought on board over the last couple of years, who are API management experts, 
through and through and have that, that history. Uh, but the two new teams that we brought on board, and really we've, we've got uh, a, a lot of big brains. <laughs> a lot of big brains. What a beautiful note to to end on. Speaking of big brains, we've got two big, beautiful brains right here on the stage. Jamie, and thank you so much for thank being here. You. Big brain to my right as well, yeah. John. Always a pleasure. And I'm sure your big brain is feeling as excited and refreshed as mine with all of the wonderful information that we've gotten here in Denver, Colorado at Boomer World 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Thank you.